Thank you very much. Yeah, so it's 1 a.m. back at home. So you, I might be a little bit jet lagged. <laughs> so hello and welcome, everyone. Yeah. I'm Adil Ali from uh, API Matic. Obviously, you heard we are based out of New Zealand. So I flew all the way to Sweden. I am really hoping a good weather tomorrow because I wanted to go and see this scenery live. <laughs> so we are API-matic, and uh, what we do, we are a developer experience platform, and we help API owners to engage developer communities and you know, increase API adoption and engagement. And by doing so, we interact with both the segments. We interact with app developers as well as API owners, which helps us in learning the requirement of developer experience and then translating those requirements into our platform, which is used by API owners. So I am going to share with you those learning and those experiences. And how I'm going to do it? I'll be wearing different hats or different caps. First, I'll be wearing the cap of an app developer, and uh, I'll be taking you through what kind of developer experience am I expecting from your API. And then I will change, I will switch my hats, and I will be wearing the cap of an API owner to show how can I get, uh, you know, how can I provide that developer experience. So let me switch it. Now I look closer to him. Okay. So, developer's perspective. Before I further proceed, I want you to quickly name your favorite API in like that which you think provides a phenomenal developer experience. Ronnie? Anyone? Any API? Okay. Stripe? Anyone? OK, so let me take you through the developer experience provided by my all-time favorite API, which is Twilio, a unicorn in the API space, and valued over 6 billion US dollars, accessed by over a million developers. So at this kind of a scale, they must have developed something remarkable that is able to engage this scale of developers. So how they're going, how they're doing it, what kind of developer experience they're providing. So I signed up once again last week to see what they're doing. And when I signed up, I got an onboarding email, and it was this. Twilio asked me to get up and running in minutes by three steps. Number one, use a helper library, or commonly known as SDKs. Second step was quick start, and third was sample code. And since I was in no mood of like, you know, doing any programming, I thought, okay, let me see something. But, but let me ask you one thing. Do you guys think there is something missing in these three steps? So to be honest, when I you know, got this email, I was expecting interactive documentation or API reference, which is the first thing we think when we talk about developer experience. But Twilio didn't give me. So I wanted to see that. So I clicked on Quick Start, only to find this. That follow the guide in your favorite programming language. Come on. My favorite programming language, thank you very much. But I want to see the API reference, the docs. I don't want to code right now. So what I did, I clicked on the top left, the docs section, and I reached at this page. Again, I code in Java. And when I click on the drop down, again, a list of languages. So, language, once again, when would I be able to see interactive documentation or API reference? And I found the link over there. Then I clicked on API reference. At last, I was able to see the reference, HTTP post to messages. But if you look at the left on the left, you can see over there install the Java helper library from Twilio, blah, blah, blah. And when I click the drop down again, I could see languages. I could see even the SDKs and their version. Why? Why Twilio has kept giving me languages? Why basically is not letting me just like you know show simple JSON and just let me uh, you know use uh, API as, as it is? 
because Twilio knows that I am wearing the cap of a developer. If I am coming to Twilio, then I must be having an IDE open in front of me, and I am trying to integrate Twilio API into my application. And it is helping me to get there as quickly as possible. So what could help me is something over here, helper libraries, SDKs, and code samples. So I went on following exactly what Twilio wanted me to, me, me to do, and I was able to get to my first Hello World in less than 10 minutes. So that was a good developer experience. And I basically you know, went through these steps. Downloaded SDKs, uh, saw the quick start guide, used code samples, saw API reference, and saw sample requests and responses. And then I thought, OK, if Twilio is providing this kind of developer experience, is there a chance that I like, find exact same things in other APIs? And I went in a survey mode, and I went through some APIs, including Twilio, Stripe, Box, Contentful, Algolia, Keen, Facebook, IBM Watson, and Twitter. And you look at over here. Almost every API is providing almost similar developer experience ingredients, the huge common things over there. So what it told me, it told me that if I'm a developer, I'm wearing this cap, then if an API contains these things, it will make my life super easy. So that was the perspective of a developer. Now let me switch the caps. Now I'm wearing the cap of an API owner. And now I'll be pondering, how can I provide all this to my users, app developers? So when I tried to analyze that table again, all those ingredients, I found two things which are common, very important points. And those two ones, number one, all the good, great APIs which are providing a great developer experience, they are doing a couple of things. Number one, they are freeing up the de de developers from redundant tasks. And number two, they are speaking the language of the developers. To elaborate, what I found is that those APIs are doing, like giving or letting the developers focus on what's creative or what's unique while doing the redundant stuff for them. And uh, to see an example of what's creative, you can say the app design or business logic, which is unique to you as a developer, while what's redundant is the communication between API and your application, or resolving the dependencies, or serializing or deserializing JSON packets. So best APIs, they free up their developers. And in other words, I'm putting here my friend Adam. Where is Adam? Oh, out there. So don't, by the way, don't miss his finale talk in this evening. So Adam said this thing, and I love this, that these and other APIs will help you Supercharge your abilities. Why? With repetitive problems taken care of, you'll be free to focus on what's important to you. So uh, that's how you can be a developer's best friend. The second thing which all the great APIs are doing is this, speaking their language. And I want to quote Nelson Mandela over here. He says, if you talk to a man in the language he understands, Adam, I missed you. I just quoted you. I saw it. <laughs> OK. So if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that is goes to his head. But if you talk to him in his native language, that goes to his heart. And developers are human. They are no different. So speak the language of your developers and win their hearts. And how powerful is like, the capability of speaking their language? Let's just look at this slide. So according to a survey, there are more than 16 million professional developers out there. And if you are able to speak the language, a particular language, you are able to unlock the developer engagement for a huge community. Vice versa, if you are not providing or supporting a particular language, you are missing a big community, and you are might losing that community to one of your competitors. So that's the power of speaking the language of developers. Now, let me switch the gears a bit. OK, I have seen what are the ingredients of developer experience, a checklist, and I have seen you know, the unique and the, the common stuff in, uh, you know, in those uh, developer experience ingredients. Now I want to elucidate some of the current practices. 
before like seeing what are my available, available options to provide their kind of developer experience. So I have actually talked to hundreds of API owners over the last three years, and I found four common practices of providing developer experience. Number, number one, the API owners keep a team of in-house developers and technical writers, and they do everything by themselves. Number two, they outsource it to some software house. And that's like one-time thingy, and you know, typically used for the API, which are static, not very, you know, uh, change very often. The third one, which is somewhat you know, cost efficient as compared to the first one, is outsourcing to, to contractors. But then you need someone in your team who can manage the team of contractors on Upwork or like uh, someone who is geolocated. And the fourth one, which is like being used by a lot of people, is community supported, which is free. Free with a lot of risk, with no maintenance, with no updates, with no support. Whenever someone come in the community wants to update the SDK or anything, you are totally dependent on that guy. So the problem, what are the problems with current practices? Four problems again. Number one, long release, release cycles. You have updated your API while your SDK or you know, developer experience portal is coming up maybe next month. Second thing is high cost, because you typically maintain a team of developers, technical writers, and testers in-house, or like you know, uh, outsource it. Number third is inconsistencies. If you are supporting multiple languages and your Java language you know, doesn't offer the same experience as your C Sharp uh, language, then that's an example of inconsistency. And the fourth one, which developers really hate, is non idiomaticity. That means if you are trying to save some cost and have only one guy to take care of multiple languages, then you might end up getting a Java code which looks like Python. And if you are a developer over here, you can understand how good that looks. So the automation the, is the solution, is the way to go, in my opinion. And uh, how to do it is like maintain your API description and, the le and leave the rest to automation. And uh, this is something which yesterday Jason Harmon, he's not here right now, he mentioned, he's told, as the single source of truth by keeping a YAML description of open API. That's exactly, you can automate a lot of things. Killian has written a lot of articles about that. Keep your API machine readable, and you can get a lot of things out of it. So the next question comes, how much can be automated? I get a lot of questions that, you know, do you generate code which is like, you know, customizable? So I said, well, customization is not the problem. It's, you know, the generated code is always open source. You can do custom, you customize it. But the problem is scalability. How scalable is that? And I loved when our friend Rob, at the back, Rob, when you gave a presentation last year in Melbourne, and he gave a very good solution to it. He mentioned that if you want to, you know, there's the only way to scale up your SDKs or developer experience ingredient is to keep them machine readable and keep your logic at the back of your API. Don't use the APIs as a cover of a bad API. Don't use SDKs as a cover of your bad API design. So if you put everything behind endpoints, then you are able to you know, quickly generate or regenerate and again generate after every API update. So how much can be automated? I will answer as to follow the basic principle of automation. And what's that? Again, keep creative part or, com or unique part to humans and delegate everything else to machines, such as if you are, for example, providing an automatically generated portal, then obviously you would like to add some guides or you have some, like, some text over there. That needs to be basically you know, uh, done by yourself. But a lot of other stuff can be automatically generated. Let me show you a quick example. One example is this. On top, you can see a developer portal which is manually written, as far as I know. And at the down, you can see a portal which is completely automatically generated. 
Obviously, the themes you are looking, the theme, the red theme, the logo, yeah, th these are the parts which were basically you know, manually added. But the SDKs in all the languages, on the left, you can see you know, the menu and the guides, and even this thing I want to emphasize over here. This is screenshot is not a screenshot. This is an SVG image which is generated on runtime and contain the exact structure of your API. So the level of automation you can basically take it to you know, this extent. And uh, uh, if I get a chance uh, to give a demo, I will, or otherwise you are uh, free to come to our booth outside and to see which we are introducing you know, uh, very recently is a concept of called live code snippets. That means you are able to you know, call an API and you can give parameters as your own examples and you will get, obviously, the, you, know, you will call and you will get the output, but you can copy that example in any language of your choice. And then the SDKs are there at the back, which will take care of the communication, and it gives you a very beautiful developer experience. So what's the advantage of automation? I asked one of our customers, it's, and it's my favorite you know, uh, quotation what he told me. Our customer is based in North Carolina. He told me this thing, that every quarter you are saving us $20,000 straight in development. OK, that's one thing, while there is no maintenance cost. But my favorite thing he quoted next, that we used to take one week to reflect the changes of our API. And now that time has been reduced to 18 seconds. That's like more than 99.99 something, you know, a percent increase in productivity. So if you are able to achieve these results via automation, then it's OK that you know, if you are able to basically generate 95% of you know, your stuff automatically, and you are getting your hands dirty for the rest 5%. That's all right. So to conclude, I would say the developers are building future. Don't kill their creativity. Let them focus on what's unique or what's uh, creative while providing them what's common and repeatable, which was automation, to create a beautiful developer experience. Thank you very much. <laughs>